Welcome into Larry's Country Diner. What a show! What a show we've got for you today. The one and only Ray sure Stevens do. is here. As a matter of fact, a little side note here you may not know. When Ray put out The Streak, this man auditioned for the starring role of The Streak. <laughs> Fortunately for us, he was turned down. It's Larry! <laughs> I remember running down Broadway naked. That yeah. wasn't part of it. Yeah, well, that's your audition, and you didn't pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got the promise. After 362 shows, this is it. It uh, comes to this. <laughs> Here is the promise, and it's an aqua blue one. Isaiah 40:28. Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows faint or weary. And in Matthew 5, 3, it says, Blessed are, for the, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right, that's the promise. We have got uh, today a favorite of mine personally. I have loved Ray Stevens since I had a copy of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Oh, I love that album. And all of a sudden it disappeared from the airwaves. That's against the law, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you found out. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I wrote the song and uh, forgot to get permission to use the character Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. And so the people sent a letter, had their lawyers send a, send a letter, cease and desist. And of course, we folded like a cheap card table and <laughs> <laughs> ceased and desisted. I liked what Bobby Bear said to uh, the company that sent him a note and said when he had done uh, God Bless America again. Uh -huh. And they sent him a note and said, a cease and desist letter. Yeah. He called him, he said, you're going to hate my next record. I love a white Christmas again. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas again. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, see, uh, you know the store yeah. better than I do. No, I, like I just happened to remember that one. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I should have had, uh, I should have tried that same tactic on Sergeant Preston, but. Uh, I yeah. loved, I mean, it was King of the Royal Mounted Fuzz. Yeah. yeah. And King, his dog's name was. Now know. that's rhyming. <laughs> that's, just, poetry. That that's poetry. Yes. That is poetry. That is poetry. Yeah. But I, I have, I have loved you since and followed your career since then. My brother and I were just talking a little bit ago about the first time he met you, the first time I met you. I was working at a radio station in Mobile, Alabama, WABB, and that's when everybody did uh, things at the war memorials. <laughs> And you had come to Mobile and did a concert at the War Memorial. And I was standing at the doorway, uh, the stage door, when you left. I said, Mr. Stevens, I'm Larry Black. Yeah, right, kid. No, you, no, no, <laughs> so? No, no. You were very nice. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. But, it's, but people, when you're in that situation, you're trying to get from one place to another quickly, and you got people stopping you all along the well, way. Well, I, if I fluffed you off, I didn't mean you to. You didn't. I had no idea how important you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, years later. I'm surprised you had a career after that. <laughs> well, I'm surprised I had one, you know. Years I, later, I called Barnaby Records because you had a song that started with Jesus Loves the Little Children. And I was doing a, a gospel rock and roll radio show and I wanted to interview you, so I called Barnaby Records. Rings. Hello, Barnaby Records. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, I'd like to talk to Ray Stevens. Uh, this is he. W wh wh why are you answering the phone? <laughs> see, I was walking by, it was ringing, so I picked it up and said hello. <laughs> and I said, well, I'd like to interview you. Uh, you. You use Jesus Loves the Little Children. And you said, yeah, my daddy told me never do interviews about religion or politics. And I said, well, that ends this interview <laughs> and hung up. Years later, 
you're doing um, things about Obama's, your mama. And I said, <laughs> what happened? No, it was Osama, your mama. Osama, yeah. your mama. <laughs> See? That's what it was. Although I don't know. I mean, it might be interchangeable. I don't know. <laughs> Jury's still out. But um, I, uh, when I, when I answered the phone, Barnaby Records, Barnaby Records was headquartered in uh, Los Angeles. Oh wow! And they had a Nashville office, and it was run by a friend of mine, Mike Shepard. Yep. And I also had an office in that little house down on Music Row, and so it would. <laughs> just be luck or lack of luck that made me hear the phone ring and Mike must have been out to lunch or something and I picked it up. But uh, uh, I don't recall saying my dad told me never to do interviews about religion or politics. Did I really say that? Yeah. I wasn't that smart then. <laughs> I couldn't have said that. Well then, in your subsequent years, uh, you said something you, about politics and, and religion. You said, I don't care anymore what people think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've reached an age where I don't care anymore what they think. I said that today to you this morning. I <laughs> <laughs> and it's about true, you know. Uh, it's just gotten so ridiculous the way the world is still chugging along and uh, things are happening that I don't really quite understand. So wow. we'll see how it turns out. It's true. It's so delighted. I'm, I'm delighted to have you here. Thanks. It's so good to be here. <laughs> what are you going to do for us? Well, I'm going to do some new things that I've been working on in the studio. <clears throat> and a guy from Springfield, Missouri named Nick Sibley yep. has written me some great songs. And uh, I've been in the studio working on this first one I want to sing for you. Uh, and I barely got enough instrumentation on it to make this track that I'm singing to today, uh, plan to put some strings on it a little later. But uh, this is a song that so interested me that I've started doing it on the live show at the Cabaret right. in Nashville. And the audiences mm -hmm. really respond to this song. And I'll preface the song by saying, spring is here and lawns are starting to be mowed again. And in Nashville, the traffic is so bad, but the lawnmowers now are consist of a truck with a trailer and huge mowing machines on yep. the back. And they park on the street out in front of the house that they're mowing yep. and further tying up traffic more than it already is anyway. And uh, that sets up this song. You can go ahead and play the track. Twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard Push mower and a gas can Sure the work was hard In cut-off shorts and t-shirts Ball caps with no face guard Where are all the twelve-year-olds That used to mow the yard Every time I see a mowing crew With a hundred grand and tools I think of all the time and money we've wasted on our schools. They've all got their diplomas. Twelve years they sat in class. If they'd only done their homework, they might not be cutting grass. So where are all the twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard? Push mower and a gas can, sure the work was hard. Now it's grown men with farm implements Man, the rates they charge Where are all the twelve-year-olds That used to mow the yard? Now I'm not faulting anyone For trying to fill a niche And I'm not saying everyone's Supposed to be rich But when you've got a full-time job any kid could do Don't be mad when a man That can't speak English Replaces you So where are all the twelve-year-olds That used to mow the yard Push mower and a gas can Sure the work was hard But you didn't need no workman's comp Or insurance card 
Where are all the twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard? Your twelve-year-olds watch videos all day long on a screen. Go show them, grass won't hurt them. It's that stuff outside that's green. Instead of pills and puffers, give them good old exercise. They'll learn to sweat, and better yet, just what a dollar buys. So where are all the twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard? Push mower and a gas can, sure the work was hard. Just get them off that internet and their backsides of lard. Where are all the twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard? You might ask, where are the twelve-year-olds that used to mow the yard? They've become successful people. That's now where they are. They're the heads of corporations with fine houses and cars. Cause back when they were twelve years old. They learn to mow a yard. Oh yeah. Yeah. My brother Richard, who is here today, and I used to cut yards when we were kids. He cut them better than I did, so I let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's that music. And here she comes. How you doing, Nadine? Running in from the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in 363 shows, I've never been told what time I'm coming in. <laughs> so we never got to that. So I... Um, that was in the manual that we were going to write. Yeah. <laughs> And I just uh, stand out there and listen for music, and sometimes I'm talking to somebody, sometimes I'm on the phone, sometimes I'm playing my word game. Hey, Ray, how you doing? <laughs> I'll calm down here. <laughs> how you? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I, you know, I, I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm Wonderful. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yep. You're looking good. Well, so doing are you. Good. Oh, don't lie to me. <laughs> well, if you'll stop lying to me, I'll reciprocate. How's that? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, the other day, my grandson came in and said, Mimi, my ear hurts. I said, well, does it hurt on the inside or the outside? He said, I, I don't know. He goes to the front door, walks out on the porch, <laughs> comes back in, he goes, both. <laughs> And I said, you know, it's moments like this that I think maybe we're saving too much for college. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And my daughter, she goes to Starbucks way, way too much. They know who she is just by when she orders. She orders it and they'll say her name and say, come on around, get it. I told her, I said, you know what? You could make your own coffee at home and save money on gas and call your name out incorrectly and then set a $5 bill on fire <laughs> and play like you've been to Starbucks. <laughs> mm. Well, Homer's family, uh, my nephew had to go in the hospital for some surgery and I went up to, with his mom and daddy up there to sit in his room while they waited on him for surgery. And they came in and they was gonna give him this medicine through his IV and he said, what is that? And um, the nurse said, well, this is your anesthetic. This is going to make you not remember anything. You won't know anything. And his granddaddy said, well, just save you medicine because he don't know nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, my problem is, is I want to follow Jesus, but I want to slap people too. <laughs> Can't do both. Uh, I know. I got... Well, just for instance, I went and I got a, I got a ticket, speeding ticket the other day. I was just going 10 miles over the speed limit. Just 10? 10 miles. That's Not illegal. 20 like you do. Uh, well, you know. You know. 
but I got a speeding ticket and I went downtown to pay. I went down my little town, paid it, and they handed me this receipt. And I said, what do you want me to do with this? He looked at me real smart and he said, well, you just save it because when you get four of them, we give you a bicycle. <laughs> That was one I wanted to slap. <laughs> but um, I tell you, I got a good church sign today. Which is? This is the best church sign of 363 shows. All right, have at it. If God can put a light in a bug's butt, just think what he can do for you. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> That's a you get a standing ovation on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you wouldn't mind, honey, would you, would you come back right right here for a minute? Well, yeah. You, okay, you put well, the honey, sign up. Just... I've, got, I've got a little something for you that I thought that you would like, and everybody else has got, got one. I know you think, well, how come I'm left out? Aww. So... We have for you, Man, dear. I tell you, this is going on my dashboard. There you go. Oh, the dashboard. Oh, my dashboard. Oh, yeah. Plastic Jesus. <laughs> la, la. <laughs> Bobblehead. You're so sweet. Thank you, baby. <laughs> well, dear, that looks just how about that? Boy, doesn't that look natural? That's how I'll be in about six months. <laughs> Ray Stevens is our <laughs> guest tonight, today, yes, whenever is. it is you're watching this thing. Ray, what you got for me now? Well, I, I got another song. What else? Ooh, you know, I, I was going to do a magic trick, but I forgot it. So. <laughs> uh, but this is another song from that genius in Springfield, Missouri, that sends me songs, Nick Sibley. Yep. And uh, this is a song. Now, you got to think about this song because it's, it's got a message. And if you're down in the dumps, this song could really pep you up. Goes like this. Free the hand, free the man, free the hand, free the man. I remember what the world was like before cup holders. Cup holders. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Now they keep our drinks upright And our cold drinks colder It's so nice when something works the way it should Now we have them in our boats, lawnmowers and airplanes In our golf carts, our wheelchairs and our cars in our bathrooms, there are some that fold up when we're done. You can find one nearly anywhere you are. So why isn't everybody happy? Why so much discontent and strife? And when I feel like styrofoam, baby, you make me feel at home. Yes, you're the cup holder of my life. With our cell phones, our drones, and computers Before these things How did we survive? Now we rarely have to think About a place to set our drink What a beautiful time To be alive Now some people say Cup holders, others say cuff folders. Pronouncing the PH as an F. There are two schools of thought and discussion.
discussions can get hot But actually Either one's correct That's right So why isn't everybody happy? Why so much discontent and strife? When my life is in the can Baby, you're my place to land Yes, you're the cup holder of my life Cup holder. Cup holder. Yeah. We'll be right back. We'll find out exactly how small it is in just a moment. Larry's Country Diners, stay with us. Don't you do something? Oh, yeah, I, I just <laughs> slept right through that. <laughs> well, you want to hear what I was going to say? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to Larry's Country. <laughs> Have you noticed today's special? Oh, no. this, is, this is a good one. The Ray Charles. Uh, Ray, Ray Charles. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all messed up. The Ray Stevens Don't Look Ethel Fried Chicken and Mashed Potatoes with Gravy <laughs> Ice Cold Tea. I'm glad you didn't miss that. There's Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Slept right through it. The cameras are always rolling. And we don't care. <laughs> First three years we did it with no sponsors at all. We used to hold up signs and say, uh, Cracker Barrel. They're not a sponsor of ours, and we'd hold up something else. It was gigantic hints, but uh, yeah, it Larry was. Larry uh, talked me into it, and I've loved it ever since. Thank you. It really has. It's been very, very special. Thank you. Uh, 363 episodes when we finished tonight with Ray Stevens. Well, I'm a showstopper, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get another song out of you, Ray. Oh, okay. This is a song Buddy Cab wrote. He's uh, written so many great songs for me and other people, too. Uh, the one that comes to mind, first and foremost, Buddy wrote the Mississippi Squirrel Revival love for that me. Song. And uh, he wrote this song, too. This is brand new. It's not even the track I'm singing to is not finished. And uh, see how you guys like it. It's not on the market yet. So if you don't like it, we won't put it out. But we'll see. I don't know. Kick it up. Well, now things are strange at my old alma mater. They're changing things that they might not order. You can just call me an old fuddy-duddy, I guess. <laughs> but they threw out teaching the ABCs, added CRT and new biology, and you can't deny all the amazing progress. Especially since Bubba changed his name to Charlene. <laughs> Went out and joined the girls' swimming team. Yeah, they won every race, broke every record in the state. So now we're making him homecoming queen. <laughs> and since Bubba changed his name to Charlene, we're now seeing things not meant to be seen. No matter how you slice it, it's hard to keep his business private since Bubba's changed his name to Charlene and went out and joined the girls' swimming team. If we continue in this pursuit, we'll need to rethink those bathing suits. They've been getting skimpier for years, and that's got to stop. No more swimming suits by Christian Dior. That's just not going to work anymore. We need a lot more fabric at the bottom now than on the top. <laughs> Since Bubba changed his name to Charlene, he went out and joined the girls' swimming team. Well, they won every race, broke every record in the state. 
So now we're making him home Come in, queen The whole senior class is predominantly Caucasian But this year they've decided to identify as Asian It's not that they didn't want their white privilege anymore <laughs> They just all thought that it might help their SAT scores And since Leroy changed his name to Louise, well, we win girls wrestling championships with ease. Yeah, while it's a great step forward, costume failures can be awkward. Since Leroy changed his name to Louise, and Bubba changed his name to Charlene, went out and joined that girls swimming team. Yes, and we've won every race, broke every record in the state. And now we're making him home, coming queen. Since Bubba changed his name to Charlene. But you know, this is all working out pretty good. Why, my wife now identifies as my husband. So I bought her a new bass boat for her birthday. Ah, and she bought me that diamond necklace she's always wanted. <laughs> hey, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> Thank you. Ray Stevens gonna get one more song out of you. Now? Yeah, right now. <laughs> oh, okay, well you mentioned that uh, you like the last song that, but, that I did that Buddy wrote. Yep. And I'm going to do another Buddy Calv song. <clears throat> you might like this one too. Oh. Kick it off, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, a gambler walked into a bar with an octopus in a great big jar, set it down, said to the bartender, tell you what, I'll bet you a couple of beers against two free hours of work around here that my friend can play any instrument you got. Well, the day was long and the business light and uh, wouldn't pick up the later that night, so the bartender scratched his head and said, why not? So he walked up on that dark bandstand, came back with a flugelhorn in his hand, put it down and said, okay, play me something hot. Then all of a sudden that jar began to shake. And that octopus came slithering out like a great big wad of snakes. He grabbed that horn and rolled around, first on the bar, then on the ground. And the bartender said, you lose in a laughing voice. <laughs> the gambler said, no, he's just confused. It's those three valves he's seldom used. You see, a bugle is his instrument of choice. Well, the octopus and the gambler drank their beers. Then the octopus crawled back in the jar with a burp everyone could hear. The bartender said, now, don't go away. I've got something that he can't play. And he left for a minute and came back with a saxophone. And the gambler said, double down this time. So four more beers were set in the line and the octopus crawled out and two beers were quickly gone. The patrons in the bar all gathered round to see if that saxophone would emit a sound. Then he grabbed that sax and rolled around, first on the bar, then on the ground, till the bartender said, now nah, do you want to concede? <laughs> the gambler said, oh, he's just feeling it out. And before he puts that thing in his mouth, he needs a minute to moisten up his reed. Well, the octopus crawled back in the jar and the gambler drank his beers. 
The bartender, all frustrated, said, Now, wait a minute here. I'll bet you the deed to this whole bar, that slimy critter in that jar, can't play an instrument that I've got in the back. And if you lose, the both of you will work for me doing what I choose for the next six months. Now, what do you say to that? The gambler said, well, buddy, you're wrong. Just bring out your sack butt or xylophone. And the bartender said, oh, it's nothing quite that trite. Then he went in the back and soon emerged with the awfulest sound you ever heard and laid down Great Highland Scottish bagpipes. Now the octopus must have thought those bagpipes glamorous because he caressed them in a manner clearly amorous. Well, they began to roll around first on the bar, then on the ground till the bartender said, I've got him this time, it's true. <laughs> the gambler said, oh, he'll settle down and play it when he stops fooling around and figures out that playing it is all he's going to do. Oh, the gambler and the octopus, they were the best, I swear. There was no other like them anywhere. Yeah, the gambler and the octopus, they were a winning pair. A straight royal flush could not compare. Well, it wasn't a fair bet, because the gambler cheated. <laughs> yeah, the octopus was a graduate of Juilliard and a member of the American Federation of Musicians. And he was also president of the Charlie McCoy Fan Club. Oh. So now you can hear him playing every night in the Gambler's Bar down on Lower Broad. Hey, bartender, eight more beers from my little buddy, if you please. Oh, man. <laughs> Ray Stevens, a delight to have you here. Oh, delight wow. to be here, Larry. Thank you very much, sir. And we'll encourage everybody to go to the Ray Stevens Theater. Oh, it's called, called the, the Cabaret. Cabaret. Yeah, yeah. Thank the Cabaret. you. Cabaret, and you're doing Saturday nights now, right? Well, now we're, we're doing Thursdays and Saturdays, and we're hoping to have uh, enough interest to add some more nights. All right, give us a cue to get out of here. We love it. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Yes, thank you, we do you. indeed. Thank you. For three Larry's Country Dance. Good ones. Remember this. Always remember. For the rest of your life, remember this. Cameras are always rolling and we, we don't, don't care. care.